Yo, listen up, here's the story. Star Wars' most brilliant villain is back. If he's so smart, how come he's dead? Alrighty. Uh, hello. Uh, I'm making this video just because this is one of those things that's gonna bother me until I say it, so I'm just gonna say it. It's... it's about Star Wars. Star Wars! Uh, hey, hey, do you remember when we saw those first pictures from Rogue One with Ben Mendelsohn in that amazing white cape and the rumor started spreading that compared him to a certain other white uniformed Imperial, you know, one from the old EU that got wiped out when Disney rebooted the franchise? Is it him? Is it him? I mean... He's got pink skin, but it kind of looks like him. Could it be him? Is he human now? Would I be okay with that? We've heard rumors of the character in Rogue One mm -hmm. um, having his similarities to, with the tire of Thrawn. Yeah. And we've also heard of maybe Thrawn being introduced in Rebels at some mm -hmm. point. Uh, do you have anything to kind of comment on that? Um... Turns out, no, Ben Mendelsohn is not playing the character we thought he might potentially play. Because... That guy is getting played by Lars Mikkelsen! Thrawn is back! Thrawn is back! Thrawn is back! Thrawn is canon! Thrawn is canon! Woohoo! Yes! Yes! In Star Wars Rebels! Uh... Huh. Yep, my reaction too, kitty. Why'd they cast Lars Mikkelsen then? I mean, he's brilliant and I'm sure he's at least 30% alien already. Handsome alien, alien with very nice cheekbones, but you know, just a guy who's from somewhere else. Dave Filoni said this was one of the hardest roles they'd ever had to cast, and as far as I can tell, Lars Mikkelsen hasn't done a lot of voice acting before now, unless you count working as a Danish dub actor. It'll be interesting to see how he'll approach this role. Okay, don't think I'm not thrilled to see Thrawn in the canon, because I am. I am. I really am. It's just, uh... Let's see if I can explain. To defeat an enemy, you must know them. Thrawn was introduced to us in Heir to the Empire, which was the first of the expanded universe novels, set five years after the end of Return of the Jedi. The New Republic, although troubled and full of political infighting, has successfully pushed back what was left of the Empire to become the dominant governmental and military power in the galaxy. And here's Grand Admiral Thrawn, picking up the pieces of the shattered Imperial fleet, adding some mining equipment, a few meters, Meteors, one dark Jedi, and a few more random odds and ends he just kind of found around the galaxy, and building a force to successfully bring the New Republic to its knees. I will pull the rebels apart piece by piece. His special tactic is to study the artwork of the different worlds in order to gain insight into their people and the tactics they are likely to use. Know your enemy and know yourself, and in a hundred battles you will never be in peril. This is a villain who's terrifying, not because he's got a giant space station or a whole lot of power in the Force, it's because he is so goddamn smart that he's got ten ways to defeat you before you even know what's going on. I meant to, my dear Watson. This was new. We'd never seen the Empire at a disadvantage before. Shows of Force and flashy displays of cruelty and overconfidence were the defining Imperial traits. They weren't creative and resourceful. They didn't need to be. And although he's ruthless in combat and terrifying to have as an enemy, he's not evil in the space Nazi kitten-hating, puppy-kicking sense that we usually see in Star Wars. He's actually a really good commander who legitimately cares about every life in his charge and never sends his people out to fight a battle that he does not believe they can win. It's not hard to imagine that most soldiers would consider themselves lucky to serve under an officer like Thrawn. You know, once you get past the fascist dictatorship thing. No, oh, you haven't been listening to Allied propaganda. Of course they're gonna say we're the bad guys. Finally, Star Wars had a compelling three-dimensional villain who could make a real case for the Imperial cause being the right one, and when you combine that with his quasi-mystical art thing and the fact that he was the only alien who managed to climb the ranks of the famously racist Empire, you get one of the most memorable, interesting, and well-beloved characters the Star Wars canon has ever seen. Move him 38 years forward and make him Grand Admiral in an Empire at the absolute height of its power, and his situation could not possibly look more different. This rebel stronghold has no hope of escape. Commence the attack. Yes, sir. He was the guy who was at his 
best when facing overwhelming odds. The guy we love to watch use his brilliant tactical mind and nearly encyclopedic knowledge of everything to come up with a play that would turn the tables and win the day. All warfare should be based upon the intellect. When the resources he can command are pretty close to infinite, how are we going to get to see that side of him? And his enemies have gone from being almost the entire known galaxy to basically just the Ghost and its crew and Phoenix Squadron, but that's just one squad with no bases, no planetary support, and no supply lines beyond whatever they can steal. This rebellion's biggest successes so far have been acts of theft and sabotage, not big space victories. Is this really a job for a military tactician? You use those for winning space battles, not tracking down terrorists. When you want to catch Osama bin Laden, you send Jessica Chastain, not General Patton. Are you really sure you're using your Thrawn right? One good spy is better than millions of good soldiers. And yeah, I know, Thrawn's art thing could help him track down terrorists Jessica Chastain style, but he's not really doing that art thing in this scene. Have you noticed that? Really, look at these images. Their files, their families, their official records, places they've been. It's all useful stuff, but it's not art. The whole art thing is that he can look at the subjects and techniques of the artists and deduce the physiology and psychology of his potential opponents, but there's no technique here. All of this is normal stuff that anyone who wants to know their enemy would read. You don't need to be Thrawn to think of this. And you don't need to be a Grand Admiral for this. I mean, if he's gonna wind up with the assignment of chasing those meddling kids around the galaxy, it would make more sense if he was a captain, a high captain, or even a vice admiral who was getting a job no one else wanted kind of dumped on him because, you know, the Empire is racist as shit. At least then we could at least suppose that he would survive long enough to get promoted instead of, you know, already figuring that since not a single rebel boss villain has made it past their introductory season, then, well... years for this! Don't kill him off yet! No! Heck, even in Legends, Thrawn, for all of his brilliance, didn't have that much success catching ships full of meddling main characters. I mean, he had to watch Luke Skywalker and company slip away from right under his nose more than once. He's a military guy. He's great at winning space battles. He's not so great at pinning down a tiny but determined insurgency that can disappear at will. We're like a vapor. We rise up out of the sand, congeal, strike, and dissolve back into the sand. They're like a blind boxer. They could kill us if they could only find us. For them, war on rebellion was messy and slow, like eating soup with a knife. See also America in the Middle East. I mean, I'm excited he gets to be canon. I'm so happy that he's on screen at long last. In fact, you know, I'd like to see more of him in just everything Star Wars from now on. You put Thrawn in just about anything and you automatically improve it. Can we just, like, retcon that Chiss lived to be, like, 300 years old and put him in episode 8? I mean, after all, the First Order is sort of everything Thrawn didn't want the Empire to turn into. Reliant on huge but impractical super weapons, participates in indiscriminate murder, and its leadership is way more interested in the Force than in effectively ruling the galaxy. It would be really fun to see him show up at, like, the head of a non-First Order Imperial Revenant and challenge Hux for control of the Empire's legacy. I'd love to see him handle Kylo's tantrums. That would be some quality entertainment. Jerk face. Because really, after this, what's exciting? Rogue One. Rogue One is exciting. I'm The Wire and I now return you to your regularly scheduled programming. It's a trap! It's a trap! We fell right into their lap! The Empire saw us coming soon! Our ship will just be scrapped! We of the Star War Reenactors Guild number 52577 recognize all those weird, freaky aliens who gave their lives to fight for and against the state's rights to blow up planets real good.